Hello, this is Jim Lammers with Trinity Animation and also vray.us, here to show you some of the new features for vray 5 for SketchUp Beta. There's a lot of great new enhancements and features they've added, and I'm going to give you an introduction to them today and give you an idea of what you can hope for in the final release when it does come out. Starting with the frame buffer. So over on the left here, if we click frame buffer, we can bring up a view and it's quite a bit different from what you might be used to. So now the lower left is taken up totally by just a pixel sampling thing. You can lock it, you can set the size, the sample size, and then you can go just click a spot. And then as it renders, uh, you'll see the RGB values and HSV values listed here below. And at the upper right, we have the render region where you can select an area that it'll render within. Also, uh, you can have it follow the mouse and render only where your mouse is. And here's where you start and stop a rendering. A lot of these buttons are available up here at the top in the pull downs. For example, there's our follow mouse. Um, there's a lot of extra features under the VFB settings, and here is where you can enable your history. So I have my history enabled already. I use the hotkey H to turn it on and off. You'll notice if it's not on and you take this little slider here, you can actually bring this in and you can have one or more columns of your history there. You can also do the same comparisons you're used to with the history tool. To get this history to work, you do have to go enable your history in the VFB settings. So here's where I've enabled it and set a project path. Now there's another panel on the other side and you can see it has a slider that can be brought in as well. Or we can use the hotkey Control L Usually you'll let it render your frame buffer and you'll just swing these panels out as you need them. So normally this will show you the RGB at the bottom and then you've got the option to enable your denoiser. Assuming in V-Ray you have turned on your denoiser here, it'll show up as an option here. Under the source, this is one of the great new features now that we're going to get into next is the light mix option. So if you switch the light mix option for the input, then you have all of your light sources summarized down here at the bottom, and each one is individually adjustable. You can actually say, let's dim down my can lights quite a bit. So we're mostly gonna have lighting from the sunlight coming in, and let's make that sunlight a little bit redder. So I'll go in and I'll pick a color here, and you can control all these variables. If there's something you don't wanna see at all, you can just uncheck it, and then it won't even appear in the scene. And all of that is there to be put back to the scene or to move to what they call a composite. So if you choose the two composite, it'll force you over to the composite mode, and now you've got all of the lights as an input layer, and the beautiful thing about this now is you can go into any one of these and apply any number of revisions to it. I'll just pick exposure, I'll put it up here above the light mix, and I'll show you how I can modify the exposure. And once I select exposure, we can then go expose the whole image like that. If I wanna just drop it directly on the sunlight, then the exposure is only controlling the sunlight now. So this lets you do some pretty exotic things. You can even save your settings as you build them, and then be able to load those back up in a set of presets. And as soon as you hover over it, it gives you a preview of what that preset would do. So it makes for very fast work in adjusting scenes. Now the next element I'd like to bring up and show you from V-Ray 5 for SketchUp Beta is called V-Ray Vision and it's this three dot icon over here. Now what this brings up is essentially a game engine is designed for real-time performance. If you have any decent video card, then this will update when you adjust your camera. It'll follow with what you've got there, but you can also change materials and lights and it'll mirror that as well. So it is uh, left mouse to orbit around, right mouse lets you zoom in, and middle mouse lets you pan. It, it can't support things like heavy uh, refraction and, because it's not a ray tracer. But in many cases, something that's real time, especially with animation, could be a great way to present to your client or get really fast output. So that's the goal here. And while you're in the scene, if you're changing something like materials, it does update in real time. So if I'm in the carpet here, for example, I turn that off, we make it go to violet, you can see it updating in the scene. And that's because it has what's called a live link happening right now. And that live link is this three dot element. So 
you have to choose between V-Ray Vision and an interactive render. If you um, turn off this interactive render, you'll see the link break here. But this is still an active scene that you can orbit around and use. It's just no longer updating with the scene changes. And one other fun thing with this is that you can use fly mode. If you hit the I, it brings up some of the hotkeys. And you'll see the tab changes us to the camera mode. And then we're using the usual Quake or Call of Duty hotkeys. You'll see this change up here. And then I can um, use W to move forward. I can use E to move up. And we can actually just travel around. And one other fun thing is that you can change the new sun around. So if I'm in the view here, I hold down the shift key and then my three mouse keys let me move things around. So there's the sun right there. We can position it anywhere and see how that's going to affect the environment. You can put the sun and everything back with F5. While I'm on that new sun feature, I'll show you where you can get uh, access to that. It's in the V-Ray panel here. And under lights, if you create a sunlight, you now have some unique uh, new options. And the key one is the sky model. You switch it to improved and you get a lot better twilight effect. You can also force the positioning of the sun. So if I'm in camera view three here, I've got the sun position so that it's out there and I raised its size up a little. And then if we go to render, I'll start an interactive render and then you can see the sun at the horizon there. And since this is interactive, if we switch to another view, you can see it update that. And the layers are also live. So if we go to light mix, even though it's still just beginning to render, we can turn off things like the can lights and see it in real time. And this leads us to another fun new feature that is in here, light gen. And in light gen, you can try some different sunlight schemes and just see how they come out. It'll just do some experiments with altitude and azimuth for your sun and sky if you're choosing exterior. For interior, you can see there's some other options. So let's just try that real quick. I'll click the generate variance and it's going to position the exterior sunlight in different places of those shots out. This is a way you can experiment without having to sit and experiment on your own. You could do 30 or 40 variations and just see what you get. So a couple of minutes later, all nine variations are there. If this is the one we like, we can click it and you can see it immediately adjust the sunlight to that position. So this is the light gen tool. In this section, I wanna show you a little bit about the new UV mapping option that they've added for V-Ray for SketchUp 5 Beta. So the nice thing about this is that you can control your mapping and you can instance it out to multiple objects. Let's say we have a ground material like this and we're gonna take this veneer A01 and apply to selection. So there's what we're getting as a result. If I kick off a render, you can see how that looks in the view. Now this particular material has the mapping on it in three places. It's got a diffuse map, it's got a reflection map, and it has a bump map as well. Let's say the mapping here, we want to rotate it so that it's in line with a long end. We would go to texture placement and work with all those. And the new feature, what you do is instead of working with it here, you can swap it out if you change this to mapping source. Now there's only one mapping source option and it's UVW placement. And once you have it in there, you can control it just like before. We can set the rotate to 90 degrees. And if we wanted this bigger, we can make it, let's say five times bigger. And there's how my my wood looks. But I've only changed the diffuse and there's a bump map and some other stuff and they don't correlate anymore at all. So usually you, you would have to go back and correct the others to match this. Now we can simply go right here, copy, go up and go to the reflection map. This one's mapping, it's going through a color correct and then here's where the mapping is assigned. We'll just change this to mapping source, right click and paste as instance. And then lastly, we'll fix the bump map up, down to bump map, switch it to mapping source, paste as instance. Now the bump mapping matches. You can see the grain matches the color, just like you'd expect. If you change it in one place, it changes it in all places. In addition to just making it instanceable, they've added some randomization features that are pretty neat as well. In the randomization option down here, if we turn on by node handle, you'll see that the mapping now is different in each of the different objects. So everywhere that it's split by a blue line, we've got a different direction of mapping, and that's because down here it's set to 0 to 360 on rotation. 
If I set this down to just 30 degrees, you wouldn't see as radical of shifts. And I can also do things like make it scale up and down to different amounts. So here it is where we're, we're scaling it 100 to 2000. Or if we make this 400, you can see it's making it much smaller now because we're allowing it to randomize. And you can even do this in steps to get brick-like effects. So I'll set this back to 100, and then I'd like to show you one other neat new feature. It's called stochastic tiling. So if we enable that instead, you'll see that we're just getting brush strokes of different angles here uh, for the woods. It's like it's splattering the map out to random angles and just using splotches of the texture. So this can be really ideal for getting a truly random looking result for grass or concrete or carpet where a texture map has pretty obvious grid uh, boundaries on it when it's repeating out. This can fix that in just one checkbox. So that's the new UVW placement modifier. Next up, I'd like to show you how the new displacement works. In the past, they did displacement as a kind of material. So when you brought up the V-Ray interface, you would have displacement attributes you could add to a new material. So if I'm here and I go create a new material, you would find it in the option to add an attribute. But this caused a lot of difficulty with the way displacement worked because as a material you would have conflicts with mapping and direction and these sorts of things. So they've rejiggered that into the new V-Ray 5 for SketchUp beta as a geometry modifier, much like fur or cross sections. So just to illustrate that, if I go create, make a big circle here, then make a group of it, and then the group is ready to have displacement applied right here. And once it's applied, you'll find that in the geometry section of the V-Ray Asset Editor. I'm gonna make the amount quite a bit because I'm going to use a water displacement material. This is the procedural water that comes with V-Ray. And this is a really wonderful procedural because it has built-in animation. So you can actually have it moving uh, when you render an animation. I know it's gonna need some extra height. I know it's very small, so I'm gonna make it 50 times bigger. So that will add some displacement with the water on there. So if we go in now and start an interactive render, there's a little delay at first because it has to load the geometry of the displacement in there. And uh, here's the result we get. So you can see it's definitely displaced. It may be a little too displaced, but it gives you a starting point. This might look better if we had a cool material applied. So let's go take one of the V-Ray uh, water materials and I'll just right click this and apply to selection. And that should make it nice and reflective. So this material has got a bunch of bump map in it. I'll go ahead and just turn that off. So now you're just seeing the displace and it works really reliably now.